This is NCC Unplugged. Hey, welcome everybody to another episode of NCC Unplugged. My name is Matt and I'm hosting today's episode. I want to thank you for taking the time out of your uh, day, out of your week to listen uh, to a little bit of what we have to say. Um, before we get into today's show, though, if you could like subscribe, leave a review on whatever platform form you're listening to us on. Uh, that really goes a long way to helping get the word out about NCC Unplugged. And it just opens it up to more and more people uh, to hear, you know, kind of what we have to say, spread the, the gospel whenever we talk about su such things. Uh, so do that, please. On today's show, I'm joined by our youth minister, Jonathan Slatt. Hello. And you're still in the youth group, right? Technically, for, yeah. for another couple months. We're joined by Adam Wilson. Hello. He was on one of the earlier episodes talking about CIY. So I want to thank you for joining us once again. So on today's episode, we just kind of wanted to have a chat with each other and um, kind of wanted to pick Jonathan's brain on, as the youth minister, kind of what you see the youth um, of today, what they're dealing with, um, just in life in general. Um, we know a lot of stuff changed coming out of COVID mm -hmm. and, uh, Adam, you've kind of grown up in the youth group from COVID, uh, the COVID era until now. Um, so yeah, we're just going to kind of look into that, look and see what the, the youth of today, the students are dealing with and, uh, kind of see how as parents or as, uh, congregation members at a church, how we can help support them along the way. So Jonathan, kind of yeah. based on that, like what what are you seeing? I guess both positives and negatives. What mm -hmm. are you seeing with with your students? Yeah, well, my students are not normal high schoolers for sure. I tell them that all the time. Right? <laughs> they're not normal people. Um, no, but our 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 youth group is is great. They're they're so strong in their faith, and I think their age is a superpower. Like just the okay. fact that they can and that you guys can say that you follow Jesus in high school is a huge testament to your dedication to him. Like I truly believe high school is like one of the most hostile environments for your faith. Like, sure. I mean, I went to a Christian college, so maybe I, I'm, I don't have a great perspective there, but like, um, I, I just think that's one of the like harshest environments. Um, but so I'm also Gen Z. I think it's, cool that I get to be the same generation as the students. Yeah. yeah. I want to make that clear. <laughs> um, You're not a millennial I'm, like me. No, yeah. I'm not a millennial. No. Um, but so when I started, it was 2021. So okay. it was like right after COVID. Mm -hmm. So I was 21 and all like the oldest students were 18. So there's only a three year difference. Um, even now there's only like a six year difference between us, which oh, right. right now is like a lot, but in 10 years, it's like it's not that much. It will yeah. be. So, um, my, I actually have my first gen alpha is they're the upcoming seventh okay. graders. So the first wow. time yes. it's not my generation. Yeah. Um, but all that to say, um, I think one of the biggest things I saw coming out of COVID, cause that's just a huge marker mm -hmm. in their lives. It's like they were forced to, from my perspective, become apathetic about a lot of things that high schoolers are supposed to care about. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. So here's what I mean. Like all, all these things, right. That you, that you look forward to in high school prom, you know, homecoming these, you know, your sports and all the things that like characterize a high school experience, your mm -hmm. social activities, your clubs. I think the, the high schoolers that were in the thick of COVID, like when, when everything was shut down, especially like that class of 2020 mm -hmm. were then, it, all of it was taken away, right? Graduation was taken away. Prom was taken away. Mm -hmm. it, it, it was gone. So they kind of had a choice whether to get depressed about that and miss those things and become upset about it, which I'm sure some people did. I mean, I was upset. I was in college in 2020. There were things I couldn't do. Mm -hmm. um, or you have to say like, well, I just, I don't care about it and let it go. So I think they were forced to like, kind of pseudo mature okay, in a sense that, you know, they're looking beyond high school things. Cause it's like, well, I can't care about prom cause I don't have it. You know, and I, who cares about graduation because I, I don't get to go. Mm -hmm. and I think that bled into a lot of different areas. Um, and there was just kind of uh, like an early cynicism that came with, with that class. Um, and I, like, 
I don't say this negatively. I, I, it's just a matter of fact mm -hmm. what I saw. Um, so, you know, they're much more focused on like, where am I going to go to college? You know, what am I going to do? And and less focused on those more high school kind of the type here things. and now. Yeah, what they're yeah okay right. It right. kind of it forced them to let go a lot of a, of a lot of things earlier than most people have to. Okay. Yeah. Um, which can be upsetting sure. for someone, you yeah. know, like yeah. you, things that you're supposed to enjoy being swept out from under you. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's kind of like that, that underlying cynicism of, well, like, why should I care about anything? Because it can be taken away. Sure. Which there's truth to. Yeah. I yeah. know as an adult, I got to a point with it <laughs> yeah. where, you know, I was having those thoughts. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. So, so Adam, kind of speak to that. I mean, again, you were, you were a freshman mm -hmm. whenever yeah. COVID happened and everything. So as we look at, as we kind of travel back in time and look at COVID right now and how it kind of like shaped you and your, your um, experience in high school, is there anything specifically that stands out to you? kind of touching on what Jonathan just talked about or? Yeah, for me, something that I've seen in, in myself and in my classmates is for those, for that first like year of high school, we were all wearing masks mm -hmm. in the building. Mm -hmm. You rarely saw your friends. We did a hybrid thing where half of the school would be in on for two days and half the school would be in for the other two days. Mm -hmm. So there were large amounts of people that I barely even knew my first uh, year in high school that sure. I just started to get to know in the last couple of years. And I think that like, that puts a, that put up a barrier between a lot mm. of people. And it mm. also made it more difficult for people to reach out and make friends. Mm. Yeah, it really did. And it like, it forced, I don't know if it forced, but it made online interactions much more appealing than going up to people mm. that already had a whole group of people from the previous year mm -hmm. and going up and meeting new people. So I've definitely seen that like, where there's still like divides in people up until graduation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. That's one thing that a lot of people you're don't necessarily think about. You're glad it was there at the time, the whole online interaction, right? Mm -hmm. Cause we need interaction and community. So that was the only way we could do it at that time. Mm -hmm. um, so we're glad it was there, yeah. but I don't looking back, I don't think people realized how it was going to shape mm. future things and the lasting effects of it. Yeah. Um, I know dealing with, you know, with my son who was in elementary school, he's in middle school yeah. now, like, you know, he, he was brought up essentially on the online school, mm -hmm. you know, Zoom or Google classrooms and everything. Um, and I just noticed with him now, he's more, you know, obviously he has his buddies here at church mm -hmm. and loves hanging out with them and stuff, but there's more of a, yeah, online, like I'm hanging out with my friends online and us old people were like, you're not hanging out with your yeah, friends. Right. Yeah, you know, that's you, a computer. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, I think it was like when we talk about, you know, now with zoom calls and mm -hmm. cyber school and things like that, it, I don't think that affects you socially as much anymore because the chances are back to be social outside of those things sure. during the whole, you know, zoom only thing, right? Body language accounts for like more than half of your communication, right? There's really no situation where you're talking to somebody and you can see their chest up and like, you can't see their, like, look, we're all talking right. with our hands right now, yeah. like, and nodding and these, and you can't over a call. You can't affirm mm -hmm. as people talk like that. Sure. Yeah. You can't do yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and there's also no other situation where you can see yourself as you're talking to somebody. Right. Yeah. So it's just all these minute things that like when that becomes your only social interaction, it's it's right. damaging. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. For sure. It's not like un what's the word? It starts with an R. Whatever. Unfixable. Reversible. Unrever irreversible. Irreversible. Irreprehensible. Irre no, that's no. Uh, I don't know. Man. But if I, I was Garrett, I would saying. know. Yeah, yeah, Garrett would know. Garrett would know. But he, it, he it can't tell us the Greek and the Latin. Yes. Okay. But anyway, exactly. You, you, but your, your mind is so flexible that it can be fixed. It's just neuroplasticity. Neuro exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Brain. 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 Yeah. <laughs> brain. Yeah. When all else the word brain. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. 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 For sure. So, kind of leaving the COVID era mm -hmm. behind if we can for now. I'm Thank sure goodness. we all just yeah. want to <laughs> get that out of our minds and everything. So, Jonathan, what do you see? Um, as the current youth minister of the of the church here, what do you see things that kids are dealing with mm -hmm. on a day-to-day -day basis? And are they some things that 
you remember dealing with or does it seem like it's a whole new crop of issues? Because that's one thing. As you get older, you're always you look back at the time when you were a, a kid mm -hmm. growing up and you always think like, oh, th those were the days, right? Yeah. Like for me, the 80s, like, yeah. oh, the 80s were perfect. Well, if you really look back, the 80s weren't perfect, yeah. right? Adam might actually agree with you. On, okay. On the, do you like 80s music? I like 80s music. Okay. You know, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah. But do you understand yeah. what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So yeah. we we kind of we kind of look back with nostalgia of the time that we were brought up in and we may not um, really take a deep dive into what's really going on. So mm -hmm. what do you see? What do you see going on with today's youth and uh, what they're dealing with? Yeah, um, I think there's degrees of things that are the same mm -hmm. and I think they'll always be the same and there's things that are different. Okay. I mean, I think like Solomon hit the nail on the head in Ecclesiastes. He talks about and there's nothing new under the sun, mm -hmm. right? Um, I mean, like I go to the mall and I see the same like clicks of high schoolers. Sure. And I'm like, I like, I know you, I don't know you, but I knew you like yeah. it's yep. the same, you know, you dress the same, act the same. So there's degrees of that where there's always going to be clicks. I mean, there's always going to be the struggle for popularity, for status, things like that. Right. It'll look different, mm -hmm. but that stuff like that is always there. I think that's just human stuff. Right. Um, when it comes to more like social issues or things like that, from what I can tell, being now re removed from high school for five or six years, it seems like, correct me if I'm wrong, um, gender identity and sexuality remains pretty prevalent, mm -hmm. but differently. I think when I was in high school, it was still, it was still more controversial and now it's more accepted. Okay which makes it difficult for you guys. Yeah, it's definitely, it's not, it's not like pressured onto people mm -hmm. as much as I think that some, that like it may look like it is, mm -hmm. but it's not, it's not like looked over or anything. It's still like put out there mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. people are still very, uh, like, I don't know. They, they're very for it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Yes. Yeah. Like I think the, like when I was in high school, the movement was more like, which side are you on? And now the movement seems to be more like you're either an ally or you're close minded. Yeah. Sort mm -hmm. of thing. Yeah. Like, I don't know if ally was a very common term when I was yeah. in high school. Yeah. Definitely for me, it was not Yeah. like, yeah, that like everything. And I, I feel like I wasn't in high school that long ago. It was <laughs> 24 years ago when I graduated. I'm 24 years old. Yeah. So, jeez. Oh, yeah. Okay, we're going to end this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel really old. Now. Um, but yeah, get, keep yeah. on going on. No, yeah. yeah. So that, that's a huge one. Um, mm -hmm. I think I think race has become a huge thing. And I, I don't... It's bigger than I, I thought it would be at this point in our like human history. Okay. Like, yeah. I think with Black Lives Matter... And, and those situations that came up, I think race is still a very sensitive topic. Mm. I don't know what it looks like in high school, but. So it's, it's almost like you're, it's almost like a trap where mm. if you try to acknowledge somebody's race, then people will point it out and say, why are you treating somebody differently? Mm -hmm. But if you not ignore them, but like just look over them, somebody has like, just your buddy, your mm -hmm. like normal friend. Then people will say, "Why aren't you treating them differently?" Mm -hmm. So it's almost it's almost like a trap. Yeah. When all you really have to do is be friends with people. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. Yeah. yeah, love them like Jesus did yeah. for sure. Yeah, but that's that's definitely a sensitive one. Mm -hmm. I think I've noticed for older Gen Z, like now we're out of college and that sort of thing. Abortion has kind of okay is a hot one. Sure. Uh, with Roe v. Wade being overturned and everything, right. it seems like that conversation is opening back up. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how much it opens up in the high schools. Um, it seems like more of a post high school thing. It's normally just avoided. Okay. okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's still like a sensitive issue yeah. then. It's avoided because people have very strong opinions about it. Okay. And they don't On get either side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I appreciate your perspective on yeah. that. We should talk more about this for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Those I think those would probably be the, the biggest three. Three. Yeah. three. Yeah. Gender identity, mm -hmm. racial sensitivity, and abortion. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. And I know for me, like again, you made reference to the Bible scripture and Solomon. Mm -hmm. There's nothing new under the sun, right? Mm -hmm. It's all there. It's all been done before. But 
I think nowadays the ease of it being able to be done mm -hmm. is glaring to me anyways. Mm. Um, you just look at technology and, you know, everybody has a voice that can be heard, mm. whether good or bad. Uh, we were just talking, me and my wife were talking about that yesterday about, you know, somebody ask a simple question on Facebook, mm. like what time does, you know, this <laughs> store open? And then like, there's just a, a chain of like, why would you go there? This, this <laughs> yeah. is terrible. This is blah, blah, blah. Yeah. where like, if you're in a normal conversation with somebody like, Hey, Jonathan, what time does a supermarket open? Yeah. Eight. Okay, great. And then you move on with your day. Yeah. I'm not going to ask, you know, 30 other people mm -hmm. and want their opinion as well. So the, the, uh, prevalence of technology, mm. everybody feeling like they have a voice that needs to be heard, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's kind of funny. We're on a podcast right now. Right. Our voices are being heard. <laughs> Very meta. Yeah. Um, but also, you know, everybody nowadays mm -hmm. carrying phones in our pockets. And um, I'm really into, I, I look a lot of the, the neuroscience on how mm -hmm. phones and screen time affect kids affect adults affect us all right mm -hmm. and going back to covid i feel like yeah that stuff was there before but then it became way more acceptable because that's mm -hmm. how we had to do things and now you know try to go somewhere without having your phone on you like there mm -hmm. i know me personally there's been times where like my phone's setting aside i'll go up to go into the other room for literally like to get a drink of water. I'll be like, Oh, I forgot my phone. I'll grab my phone. Gotta have it. I'm not doing anything with it. I just, I need to have it, you mm -hmm. know, and the ease of access of everything on our phones. Mm -hmm. I am so thankful. They weren't a uh, smartphones weren't a thing when I was in high school. Yeah. Um, I would have gotten in a lot of trouble and I was a good kid too. <laughs> like I, I was terrified of my parents. Yeah. Like I was, I was a good kid, but, um, Adam, do you see that mm. being a, and I know every family is going to be different with their rules and everything with cell phones. So I'm not sure where, where you're at with that or. Yeah. So even like, I'm not saying like my parents are incredibly strict, mm -hmm. but with parents who will tell me when I've been spending too much time on my phone. Mm -hmm. It's even then it's still difficult to not, like you said, walk around the house with my phone. I could be doing the dishes and my phone's in my pocket, mm -hmm. which like you've said that. And I just realized that I do that right. and how strange that is. Yeah. So, yeah. It's def it's almost subconscious at this point Yeah, where it's just like something that you're used to having all the time. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's huge. I think it contributes to anxiety. Yep. Big time. Yeah. And I think, it would be irresponsible to talk about issues with Gen Z and not bring up anxiety and depression. Mm -hmm. Like yes. it's just, yeah. yeah. I think being so connected all the time gives you guys a lot of pressure to like keep up with everything and mm -hmm. yeah. stay connected with everybody. Like, right. yeah. 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 And that, that was going to be, uh, that's a good segue into my next mm -hmm. question is we, we do see a rise of anxiety and depression mm -hmm. in, in the youth today. Um, and I always wonder, and kind of cause you have a psychology background as mm -hmm. well, it's, I always wonder, is it, is it that it's worse with this generation or is it that we're just more mindful of it and mm. aware of it? Um, so has it always been there and we just like, oh, toughen up kid, you'll be fine. And mm. then that kid had to figure out how to handle it themselves. Um, or is it? In, in your opinion, is it legitimately something that you personally doing what you do, you see yeah. on the rise? That's a great question. And it's like something I wish I had read more literature on. Mm -hmm. So I might, you know, you can always do that. Sure. But, um, but the literature on that is tough because it is. It's like anytime you look at statistics or evidence in that manner, like you, you only have what's recorded, mm -hmm. right? And there's a lot of nuances with anxiety that, aren't recorded just like anytime you, you know, toughen up kid. Like we don't know how many times that was said or when right, what context, right. you know, I think it's probably a combination of both. Um, I think there's more, not more to be stressed about. We're more aware of things that stress us out mm -hmm. now where, you know, when you weren't connected 24 seven to everything, it was so much easier to focus on, what's directly in front of you. Yeah. And you I've, know what's going on in your bubble. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. yeah. Right. And I've experienced that in times I've done like, you know, I try to get my screen time down to less than 30 minutes a day. It's mm -hmm. like I leave my phone away. 
it's like, yeah, I got like stuff done around the house. Like it was, yeah. it was awesome. I could focus. Yeah. Um, so I think you're seeing everybody, right? Especially on social media. You're seeing all these people that it's like, oh, they're in this honors class. They're going to this college. They already have this planned out. It's like, I don't even know what I want to do. Like, yeah. I got to hurry up and figure it out. It's like, you don't. Mm-hmm. You know, you're a junior in high school. You're a senior in high school. Take it slow. Mm-hmm. You know, be prayerful. Seek counsel of your parents and, and teachers that you trust. Right. And and take your time in making these decisions. You don't have to rush through it. Um, and I don't know if anyone outright says you have to rush through it, mm-hmm. but the comparison game of this person's doing this, this person's doing that is always going to motivate you for better or worse to do what they're doing. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. 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 And that's a very good point too, about, mm-hmm. you know, what you were just saying about knowing, having access to know everything that's going on, even if it doesn't affect you. Right. Right. I mean, you know, wars going on, uh, on the other side of the world. Yes. We want to be praying for those people. We, we, you know, our hearts break for, both sides because people are dying, you right. know, like these are people that God created mm-hmm. and they're losing their lives. Um, but we can also get like way caught up in it and have that kind of dictate our, our daily lives as mm-hmm. well. Um, and that's, yeah, that's a dangerous thing to, to, to just be thinking about all the time. Right. Um, you know, I, I know with, in my family, my, my parents have always said, you know, um, you know, you see like a rally, an anti-abortion rally or whatever. Mm-hmm. And and my dad specifically has always been like, I'm going to start with my family mm-hmm. and make sure I teach them why this is wrong or why, you know, the Bible says this. Mm-hmm. And then as I teach my kids, it's up to them to teach their kids right. and then them to teach their, in your sphere of influence and everything. Right. And he was always on the mindset that's going to reach more people than standing on your bully pulpit and just yelling at people. Mm, yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, so Adam kind of, um, the, the, and you don't have to get into like deep detail if you don't want to or anything like <laughs> yeah. that, but, um, you are on a couch with a psychologist though. So yeah, well, not I'm a psychologist. Yeah. yeah. No. Oh, yeah. Man. I need about eight more years of school. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> but I mean, what the, the things that we've talked about as the, the two older guys here in the yeah. room, like, are they, are, are those legit things that you've dealt with personally? Um, are there other things that you see kids today dealing with that we haven't taught touched on? And so the things you've already talked about a hundred percent, the, the pressure to like compare yourself to other people. Mm-hmm. And no matter what stage of high school or life you're even in, mm-hmm. uh, there's always you're always looking at what other people are doing and seeing how you compare to that, and that's always a big uh, big struggle. But uh, yeah, that's cool. mm-hmm. yeah, that's the biggest thing that I've seen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So let me ask you this, and apologize for cutting you off. No, 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 no. So like yeah. for me, growing up, yeah, no, no, growing <laughs> up, like you know, drugs alcohol sex were like the big like Mm -hmm. three that we were always being pressured with or you were being told like this is what you're going to be pressured with um and i don't know if it was just the friends i hung out with or what but it wasn't necessarily thrown in my face or a big um a big as big of a thing as you know people said oh you're gonna have to deal with this how are you gonna react and everything Mm -hmm. is that uh, kids these days are you are you all dealing with you know the same pressures drugs sex smoking alcohol i think those still very much exist Mm -hmm. and like you said how it might have just depended on the people that you hung out with Mm -hmm. that's Mm -hmm. that's 100 percent the reason so people who you spend your time around what and the habits that they have are going to be the habits that you have Mm -hmm. so it's like for me the like i've had to get out of uh relationships whenever things like those would mm-hmm. be brought up. Right. That's how I dealt with it was to leave. Right. And while I may could may have been able to try to uh, help those people instead of just leaving mm-hmm. and uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's just, just trying to figure out what you do in those situations actually is important, mm-hmm. but it doesn't come up as much if you don't spend your time around people who are doing those kinds of gotcha. things. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. 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 And we'll talk in youth group a lot too about, you know, how do you find the balance of being friends with people that don't love Jesus so that you can help them love Jesus mm-hmm. versus right. not being around people that are going to drag you away from him? Mm-hmm. And I, you know, we I think what we kind of land on and, and try to explain is the people that are in your closest sphere need to love Jesus. Right. 
might not be a popular thing, but mm-hmm. it's it's true. You know, if you've got people pouring into your life that don't follow Jesus, you're going to be dragged away one way or another. But that you know, you still have those other relationships where you know you want to live in a way that they can see Jesus, but the people that you're going to trust and confide in and mm-hmm. grow with are going to have to be people that love Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's a great point. And that's, I know, looking back in my life too, because I had my church friends and I had my school friends, and I, I, thinking about this, can look back and say, when I was with my church friends, it was, it was just, it was easy. We just mm-hmm. got to like enjoy being kids and like having a youth and, mm-hmm. and enjoy doing things where when I was with my school friends and I, I didn't hang out with like terrible kids or anything, mm-hmm. But it seemed like the ones that didn't have Christ as their center, I was always having to be on guard Mm -hmm. because I didn't want to fall victim to that. And it wasn't as enjoyable of a time hanging out with them. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, I, I, you know, try to teach our kids the best we can, just like your your inner friend group is so important. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, you need to have that personal relationship with Jesus and then hopefully that permeates to the the closest group of friends that you have so mm-hmm. that you can all feed off of each other. Because at the end of the day, we're all human. We all have our struggles and we right. all sin and um, we need to be there to rely on each other yeah. um, for sure. So. Yeah. Uh, and I think the most difficult thing, at least in my experience and with some of the people I know, is it's not, the problem is when it's not shoved in your face and you don't notice it at hmm. first, when it's like a subtle temptation. Yeah. yeah. That's when it can really become a problem. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And isn't that funny how Satan works mm-hmm. in that way? And I always say I had, on other podcasts I've done before too, like I sometimes think we forget that we talk about Jesus and God and we talk about Satan, but sometimes I think we forget that Satan is a being that is actively mm-hmm. trying to get us. Yeah. And he is not always going to be there, you know, the the red tail and the horn right, yeah. saying hey yeah. do this do this because yeah. most of us yeah we're smarter than that we're not going to do it but the 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 sly ways that mm. he can get us to justify things in yeah. our minds and everything and he he knows our weaknesses mm-hmm. um yeah so that that's a very good point though yeah, that's awesome yeah so in uh in closing jonathan as the uh, as maybe a lot of parents are listening to this. And mm-hmm. we've kind of talked about, you know, a lot of the the negatives and, and what we see kids dealing with today. Uh, do you have any any hope for the <laughs> parents that are listening out there from what you see maybe with, speak to the youth here mm-hmm. at church mm-hmm. um, and just kind of what you see? Yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely have hope for yeah. sure. Yeah. You know, um, I have hope that God is always working. God's spirit is powerful and he's going to work to those that, welcome that right and who mm-hmm. let them direct the spirit um who let the spirit direct them to the things of god like the, mm-hmm. there's hope um i think all, all the things we've talked about anxiety gender identity um abortion um racial issues we've talked about drinking and sex and all these things right i think a lot of them if not all of them come down to this core issue for the current generation which is identity mm-hmm. who am i and what do I do? What do I deserve because of this? What do I not deserve? Who am I supposed to follow? Who, who am I? Um, so I think helping our students understand that they can find their identity in something that won't be taken away and can't right. be taken away in Jesus. Um, and, and being honest and saying like, yeah, these things can fall away. And like, you know, as adults, we'll say like, you can lose your house, you can lose your job. You know, we could lose freedom in our country. Mm-hmm. You know, I pray that we won't, but it's realistic. Even the things that are so ingrained in our lives can be taken away, but Jesus never can. Mm-hmm. Right? So help, helping them find their identity in Christ and seeing themselves as I've, I've been created and I have a purpose and I'm loved and, right. and that. Um, and I think our group sees that. Um, this past CIY has been super encouraging. Mm-hmm. Um, just so much spiritual depth in the students. Um, and I, like I said at the beginning, they're, they're not normal high schoolers. Right. right? They're, right. I, and I tell them that all the time. Like normal high schoolers don't pray with each other mm-hmm. when they need prayer. Right. Normal high schoolers aren't spending time to help build each other up. Most high, no, normal high schoolers aren't, 
you know, working hard to help their friends know Jesus. Mm -hmm. Um, And I I see it in our group and I just see such a fire in them and such a a foundation of Jesus. Um, And, you know, it's awesome. Yeah, Yeah. it is. It is awesome. Yeah. It speaks for itself when you see them the way they talk and act and, and live, it's, it's incredible. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. No, those are, those are all great things. Adam, do you have any words of uh, wisdom as we close out this uh, episode? Never hurts to invite somebody to a church event. There you it's, go. That's the a, best advice I've ever heard. Yeah, yeah. In terms of bringing people. Right. Right. And that's a, that's a very good, easy access point onboarding yeah. point, if you will. Um, sometimes it's hard to get people to step through the doors of a church on a Sunday morning, mm-hmm. but if it's a youth event or something, just invite them, right? Yep. That it could plant that seed for sure. So one thing I want to end on too, and uh, you you kind of touched on this just a, sec- a second ago, Jonathan, is when people are looking for identity and you said, you know, we are, we are created by the creator. Mm -hmm. And one thing I always tell my kids, and I think this rings true for all of us, you know, when, when you're feeling like you, you've lost your way or you have no identity or what do I believe or out of everybody in the world, like God chose to create Jonathan Slatt, Mm. God chose to create Adam Wilson, like God chose to take the time to create you if you're listening or watching he took the time to make you he there is a purpose for Mm. your life there's a purpose for all of our lives um because the creator made you so you know if you're dealing or struggling with that today i just pray that you know you could um come to us as a as a church come to a, a friend who's out there that may be able to to help you um but yeah just just know that you are important and uh yeah you're created by the creator and i just want to thank you guys for joining us yeah thanks for, uh, having for us. another yeah. episode of ncc unplugged until next time thanks again thank you for tuning into ncc unplugged if you've enjoyed our podcast please be sure to rate and review it and share it with your friends and family if you are interested in learning more about norwin christian church visit our website at norwinchristianchurch.com We also invite you to join us at NCC for one of our three services. Sundays at 8.45 and 10.30 a.m. and Thursdays starting September 5th at 7 p.m. We have engaging classes for all ages, ensuring there is something meaningful for everyone in our church community. Thanks once again for listening, and we hope you have a great week.